Hey everybody, apologies for the grubby hands, I was doing some woodwork yesterday and some wood glue was stained my fingers. But that's actually relevant to the next video because I'm going to be trying to do some casting with bismuth. However, in this video, continuing on with the series, I've made a few up to now, I'm trying to make the biggest crystal I can from bismuth metal. Bismuth metal is a metal very much like lead, but it's not poisonous, it melts at 271 degrees and when it solidifies it forms these crystals. This is the best crystal that I managed to make in video up until now. And going in tradition with every profession that I've done that involves capturing something on video, whether that be wildlife photography or, or vlogging or, or making videos like this, the time that you don't film is the time that you'll nail it. And I even predicted this happening on my Discord, and I said it would happen, and it did. I had a little experiment run working on the theory which was that I need to keep the pot as warm as possible to turn the heat down very gradually over time keep it covered to try and keep the heat in and basically keep as much temperature in there as for as long as I possibly can and then pour it out. As you can see, this is the crystal that was formed from that small pot. So with three times as much bismuth in a much larger pot, hopefully this time I'll be able to nail a really big one. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button. But for now, relax and let's get on with melting this because this is going to take a while. This is from the bismuth oxidizing and solidifying. And the problem is every time you melt the bismuth, you lose a bit due to it oxidizing and you can't really get it back. Okay, one last look at the colors, which are absolutely stunning. Uh, unfortunately for YouTube, this new technique's not great because I need to cover it and I need to turn it down to minimum. And then I'm gonna have to wait, I'm suspecting an hour maybe because uh, I really want to reduce the speed that it goes from its melting point through its solidification crystallization phase into its solid form. Uh, the crystal should grow slowly and large. Uh, what I'm going to try and do to aid that is a thing called seeding. When it's cooled down a little bit, I'm going to drop this little small crystal I made from a previous failed attempt in there, and hopefully it should start forming off of that. May work, may not work, but either way, Hopefully we'll get a big one this time. So uh, time warp to when I think it's about right to put that crystal in. Drop the crystal in. Yep, that's just proud of the surface. Cover it. Hmm, actually, I might want that to just go. Oh, it's sinking. Right. Power is off. The problem is, right, I don't know where the melting temperature is. I don't have a thermo... If I had a thermostatically controlled cooker or heater, you could put it to 275 or 280 to get it all melting and then turn it down and keep it at that temperature. And I assume that's what professional bismuth crystal growers do is they'll have a temperature control thing that can bring the temperature down and then they can take crystals out and then they bring it back up and, then, you know, they farm them. Um, vast quantities of bismuth and equipment required. So doing this at home is a fun challenge. Am I weird for doing this? I, I get the feeling I'm weird. Anyway, let's catch up in a bit when it's started to cool down a bit more. I think it's time to pour it. Oh 
Can you, can you see what I can see? This is going to be a real pain to get apart, but we'll get something out of it. Okay, so um, I'm going to knock this out because this looks amazing. I, uh, I shook it backwards and forwards, and I was told that that would stop the crystals forming, but it formed loads. So that's a thought for the future. So we'll have a close look at these in a minute when we go to the uh, the nice, pretty close-up shots. I think my only option for this is going to be to break it, because it's so thick. <sighs> it might ruin it. This might be a fail video. But, but some things aren't easy, so let's just try it. Okay, so this was a bit of a fail, but not a fail at the same time. It's kind of hard to gauge it. Uh, so the previous best crystal I've made, as you will have seen in the last video, uh, is this one, which is small, but it's got lots of uh, levels to it. The one that I made off camera, as you can see, is much larger and it's got lots of good starting points for building big crystals but I just didn't have the depth to leave it long enough. Now my goal has always been to better the last video. If I'm gonna put another video up, I've gotta get better crystals. I'm gonna let you decide. Leave a like if you think I've made better ones than this in this video. So there you go, there's each one of the crystals I created in this video. This thing is nuts, just look at it. It's got a lot of bismuth in it, I should get rid of it, but I'm kind of tempted to keep it because it's just so pretty. Um, and obviously these are all the other ones that were created in this video today, uh, I believe. <laughs> if I remember them all correctly. That's one I don't think I did a close up on. Is that it? Oh, and this one, of course, let's not forget this one. I think technically I have actually made, made bigger and better crystals than the previous videos. They're just not as interesting looking, you know, because they haven't had the time to develop the layers, but they are definitely a lot bigger. So these are all the crystals that I've made throughout the last three or four videos. Um, still not where I was trying to be, you know, this like this, but much bigger uh, would be cool. I honestly think having experimented my problem is, is simple which is that the more depth you have of liquid you have more mass so it's it cools down slower but you also have more time because what i was finding is in even even the curry bowl it would solidify from the top and the bottom at the same time uh even if i covered it it would still be pretty close to each other 
and then obviously there's only so long before it's so thick that you can't break the top or the bottom to be able to get in there. I think what I need is a, a taller sided saucepan and probably a couple more uh, kilos of bismuth in it. And then I might be able to actually have enough time to grow the much larger crystals. Now, between making these and two other items which were cast in bismuth, which you'll see in the next video, uh, which are very cool, I will say, because it actually went quite well. So subscribe to see those. Um, I've only used about a kilo of the three kilos of bismuth that I had. I've lost a couple of hundred grams in oxid oxidization. Um, but in theory, if I get a little bit more uh, in the future, I can melt more and try and do bigger and better things. I think these videos are just very interesting. I think the whole process I'm finding extremely relaxing. And if you enjoy the videos and you hit that like button, well then maybe I'll make more of them. Please hit the subscribe button at the same time. I'm on my way to 100k and I'd really appreciate the help with that. And if you really like to help this channel, please consider joining my Patreon. You get videos at least three days early, get questions in the monthly Q&A. You also get to be a member of the Discord, which I'm in very regularly, and there's, it's very active. We sit in there and play games and chat quite regularly. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.